Welcome to another episode of the Pat Down. I'm here with Chris Bangalanga, Golden Chin Child. And <laughs> I'm here with with Dia. <laughs> <laughs> this is so silly. It was wholesome and silly. I like it. I'll be oh, golden. Dion, the lone nut nigga. Mm. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> not as wholesome. <laughs> you really got yourself with those. Because you? <laughs> I was looking at all. What can I say about Dion? Lone <laughs> nut nigga. That sounds good. <laughs> 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 Fucking face hurt. Thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of the Pat Down. Y'all stay tuned after the music, and y'all gonna find out wh- why Dion nuts weigh a pound each. <laughs> None of these ever happen in the episode. You're supposed to tease the episode. <laughs> oh, she's eating liver loaf. Oh god, <laughs> your colonoscopies tomorrow. You can't eat that. I mean, I am. <laughs> <laughs> She smell like doodle. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back after the break. Hey, uh, why am I not showing up? to get my hair washed so i was like let me see if they want i was trying to podcast while i had my wig on but you, you motherfuckers didn't answer in time so time i unglued my wig somebody i said, think that, uh, that's that's your natural hair this is my hair it but looks I, great yeah but i need to wash this shit it's itching like nuts nigga <laughs> <laughs> we know how that feels yeah trust me <laughs> she has nuts around <laughs> So I'm just trying to uh <laughs> I'm just trying to uh Well what, what are you doing with your hair that you needed to wash it? I have to wash I have to take care of my real hair, Chris. I gotta wash it and deep condition it and then braid it back down so I can wear wigs. Okay, so you keep it braided all the time and that's how you put the wigs on. Yeah. And then okay. I, you know, treat my edges and shit, try to draw my edges back. I'm up here looking like boo boo the fool sometimes. <laughs> but how you guys been? Things have been great. I'm tired as fuck because of daylight savings time, though. My kids are a mess. I thought daylight saving time stopped. It wasn't no more. No, it's no. We went to a birthday party today with 10 five-year-olds, and it was just a disaster. (laughs) 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 Just crying. Five-year-olds. Everybody needed a nap. The parents, the kids, the babies. What was the alcohol? There was alcohol there. Everybody was drinking. I've been to a party with 25 black kids and nobody was crying. Yeah. It was a lot of set your black ass down. <laughs> no, everybody, everybody in my circles in this particular circle is into gentle parenting, except Reagan and I. We don't do gentle parenting. We're not we're not parenting like maybe the you fuck do. is gentle parenting. When wow. you start acting up, let's say uh Squish started acting up and I uh, was throwing a tantrum in public. You'd walk over to them and you'd lean down and you'd say, now, honey, are you having some feelings? Okay, let's talk about those feelings. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry you're having a hard day. Not, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you embarrassing the family? Stop First it. Off, get the fuck up before you be a flow mat. <laughs> Everybody in uh, Reagan's church mom group at church is a gentle parent. She's like, this is ridiculous. And these kids, they're all bad. That's some white people shit. Yeah. No. <laughs> some no, for sure. Fucking, I wish my mama would come talk to me, talk about <laughs> express your feelings. Are it's you start, having, are you okay? When you don't pay any of the bills and you ate my food this morning and you were in the floor <laughs> acting like an ass. Oh, come on, baby. Time out. How the oh, fuck is a you. five-year-old going to express their feelings? They don't know what they, they mean. They don't have the words. <laughs> yeah. So it would be more like it's get the fuck up before you get knocked the fuck out. I'm not I, playing with you. Get up, Chris, before I slap the black off of you. Yeah, the thing I've learned, you know, parenting. Don't worry, Chris. There you has slap much. I, that's, I, used to, I, I used to be very black, but I was just horrible. <laughs> Miss Pat beat the shit out of me. No, it's <laughs> the thing I've learned is you your kids have to be not afraid of you, but they have to respect you. And they're not going to respect you if you're leaning down going, now tell me about your feelings. 
You should be afraid of your parents. Absolutely. <laughs> you think so? A good, healthy fear. Yeah. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm, I mean, our jokes aside, you ain't got to knock the shit out of them, but I don't understand. Uh, express yourself. Well, you having a bad day. You're not having a fucking bad day. Rent is free. You have no bills. What happened? You having a bad day because your fucking crayon split? Uh, I, I don't understand. What are you talking about? Set your ass down. Yeah. <laughs> if, if not, then they're going to be running you. I've seen kids in the store whooping their parents' ass, and I be want to jump in and help whoop the parents' ass because you letting this four year old whoop your ass. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I've it's never seen that. <laughs> what. Oh yeah, she's not telling. The, she's not lying. She, especially when I lived in Plainfield, it was the mm-hmm. most bullshit. And I just kept my mouth shut. Like my little neighbor next door. Oh my god, that little girl would come out the house and they be called the police. This bitch sitting on the roof. You had one time I remember that on my motherfucking roof, and I'd have beat the shingles off your ass. Because <laughs> <laughs> time you get your dumb ass on this roof and you slide the fuck off, they're gonna lock me up for being an unfit parent. I didn't even know you were fucking up there. I was there was so many times I knocked on that door. Get this motherfucker off the roof. <laughs> you had a gargoyle. <laughs> yeah, that was you know, kind of crazy shit. Be out here at six o'clock. One day she had traffic backed up in her little. She snuck out the door. And she got in her little uh, electric car and, and stopped in the middle of the street and had the traffic backed up. I'm beating on the door. The mama said, I'm your, I'm your daughter out here with a battery dead in her car holding up traffic. <laughs> mm-hmm. You need AAA. <laughs> you need your ass beat triple it's, time. It's, it's definitely a white thing. And I see a lot of parents being run by their kids, by their toddler kids who some, need to be some set. Out there, set too. There was some black ones. I'm some sure. Black ones. A lot of them. But, but I, it's it's you got to set standards as a parent and you got to tell them this is what's socially appropriate and this is what's not. And, yeah, you can cry, but let's do it in a place that is not, you know, in the middle of the fucking store like a baby. And then you have Miss Pat who say, yeah, you can cry, but I don't give a fuck. And if you get loud in this store, you might lose your teeth and they're going to have to <laughs> run them up to put them back in your mouth. See, I think you're a reaction to gentle parenting. That's <laughs> just kidding. Gary on I'll do gentle parenting as a as a, a counter reaction. Yeah, Gary Anna probably would do. I bet Gary Anna was actually a really good kid though. She she probably had a she smart mouth, but I bet you never really had to discipline her, did you? Because she seems like she I, just. I, I had it. to say a lot of shit to fuck up, Gary Anna. <laughs> shit to fuck up. Now Nike and Junebug. Nike and Junebug didn't get a lot of whipping. Nike was a crybaby, so I didn't at the. I'll be honest with you, after Ashley and Nakia, I really didn't whoop a lot because my husband say, hey, sometimes words can hurt. Well, I'm like, I don't have the words that hurt. They used to motherfuckers and bitches. <laughs> I done used I, all my hurtful words already. <laughs> <laughs> I've exhausted this supply. Oh, they done hurt it already. <laughs> I ran into a uh, Friday night. I ran into somebody that was uh, Garrett's teacher. Excuse me. She called him Garrett. Uh, Junebug's teacher. Mm-hmm. And she goes, yeah, uh, I only met Miss Pat one time. She came into the classroom and she goes, listen, honey, I'm sorry. It's not you. You're just too nice. And he needs a mean teacher. So I'm sending him to Mrs. Cunningham. <laughs> <laughs> and it was Mrs. Coyle. Uh, she grew up two doors down from me as a kid. And she's a teacher now in like seventh grade. And she's like, yeah, Pat transferred Junebug out of my classroom because I was too nice. <laughs> every time i run into somebody from plainfield that's that works at the schools they always have a story about you and one of your kids like that it's really so and i didn't always. even spend much time up there always I went, I went to one football game and you know i i, I come from atlanta you know we'd be out the parents be like hit that nigga kill him and and jumbo was like mama come to my football game and they was like go connor go <laughs> Good job, Connor. And I was like, oh, hell no. I can't support my kids here. <laughs> I'm going to get arrested. Oh, I hey, can't support oh, my kids here. She's okay. not wrong. <laughs> if you get too energetic at, plain, at a place like Plainfield, people start getting worried. Yeah. Especially if you're black. Yeah. And so I said, I'm not going to, I said, Juma, I can't come up there. They're going to arrest me. So I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it. I'm, I can't support you. I got to support you from the house. I said, because I cannot sit next to this white mama go, oh, Connor, 
Go Connor. And he just missed all the fucking tackers. Tackle. Connor suck ass. <laughs> Somebody need to tell y'all that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't cheer on a child that's sorry. I mean, and, 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 <laughs> what imagine I, if he just talks to Connor like Matt Ryan. Fuck you, flat foot, <laughs> concrete me, foot, motherfucker. I can't support a child that's sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've told y'all this story. I've always been a real mother. I mean, I mean, just honestly, blunt honestly. When when Nakia tried basketball and his shoes would not stay on his feet, I said, "Come in, Nakia, we quit. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't for us. You like a goddamn fool." <laughs> you could have you, you robbed him of future stardom. He he was much happier with niggas hitting on him in football <laughs> than basketball. How he, the fuck was he running out of his shoes? <laughs> I don't know. I tied him around his ankle like ba- ballerinas. Is he storing he was, bacon in him? I don't fucking know, but he was so fucking... I think he got one rebound at the end of the year. I don't think his mind could grasp the the things you had to do in basketball. It was too fast and too much. Yeah, it's a fast-paced game. You gotta know <laughs> his court awareness was just zeroing in on the food and concession he, stand. You know, he was like, you really need to put him in ballerina, but ballerina... What is it, ballerina? Ballet. Ballet. <laughs> oh, God. I think need to put him in ballerina. <laughs> Could you imagine if he was in ballet? <laughs> because he had no he had no coordination. He was horrible. <laughs> he was fucking horrible. And he wasn't even fat at the time. Did you ever have any interest in sports when you were in school? She had I mean, two I- kids by the time. I know. I, as soon as I asked it, I remember she had like <laughs> yeah, an eight year old by the time she was a senior in high school. All right, Ashley, y'all take care. I got track practice. <laughs> I, uh, I had, um, Let me no, ask that again. If you could go back in time and not get pregnant at 12, would you have played sports? <laughs> would my you have coach, liked to? My coach at, uh, uh, I went to Kennedy Middle School and then I transferred back to elementary school because it was just a county that we was in. Mm-hmm. And, um, my coach, uh, oh, wow, we are. Excuse me. My coach, um, wanted me to throw the shot put because I was uh, like, big girl. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to throw that heavy ass iron ball. I don't want to throw that heavy. I, I, he's going to throw this goddamn ball, Patricia. <laughs> so I threw that motherfucker and I slung the shit out of it. <laughs> and he was like, You good? I was like, At what? <laughs> <laughs> I played shot. I was shot put because I my parents made me do track. I played shot put too because that's what the fat kids did. Yeah, I wasn't fat, but Gary, I played shot put. <laughs> well, that you used to have to go out there and do two laps, and I was so slow, I'd do one lap, and they're like, "All right, good, good job getting two. Good job getting two. I was like, <laughs> "You're I'm, welcome." Gary, I was at high school, ninth grade. And she went around the tra- track so slow. <laughs> and the lady called me. She said, Gary, I don't think she's going to win today, but she's not going to win. She's been out here walking since after lunch, and I'm going to sit here and wait on her. And she had to do four laps. I think she got through probably about 430. I had to <laughs> kill her. <laughs> she did a 5K in five years. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Allen was crazy because she didn't want to be she was a plus size girl and you know she went to this all white school so you know Playfield had like one or two two pools I think and uh because she went to the new high school yeah and she did not want to swim and swim was like one of their classes mm-hmm. and so she she's like I need you to write me a note and tell these people I don't ever go off my period <laughs> 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 oh, didn't she get caught at the pool at your apartment complex that next day or something? Some shit. But I'm like, Gary, I nobody stay on their peers. I do. <laughs> For a semester. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that Gary Allen did not like putting on no more. She wouldn't do it. She like she she would jump in the water her whole school outfit on. <laughs> I should talk to my friends who work at the school because I, I probably have a dozen friends, classmates that work at the school. 
and just go around to them and see what Garyana stories they have because they always have the best. There's not a lot of June bug stories and, and Nikea obviously was a little too long ago, but Garyana just had the biggest mouth. And oh. I guess they all talk about Garyana still because she's so funny and they had to try and discipline her, but she was too funny. So they like would be laughing under their breath. One teacher said <laughs> while trying to hold up the standards that they had to set, <laughs> but she was just too quick. She was quick, boy. She and but you know the thing is what I liked about playing fish, she really like just jumped right in. She yeah. probably struggled a little first year because the little white girls thought they were gonna get away with calling her fat. But when she ate them bitches up, it was over. It was <laughs> over. I mean, literally, everybody knew not to fuck with Gary Allen. Everybody. Who who was prom king or queen? Weren't weren't one of your kids Junebug or all of them? Prom king. Junebug? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was prom king. I, I bet he was just fun. He's fun. He's good natured. I bet he was just a blast in school. You know what was crazy? Because when we went on the Burt Kreischer cruise, he saw a lot of his classmates. Really? That's mm -hmm. cool. He saw a lot of his classmates. And he got sloppy drunk on that cruise. <laughs> that is one of the good things about Plainfield is like, I still, you know, I ran into Megan at the this place. We went to preschool together. You know, you still you have lifelong friends that you kind of hang out with because you all grew up in one small town. Who you went to preschool with? I don't remember nobody from preschool. Well, I, I remember my I preschool. Didn't, I didn't have generational trauma to deal with, so yeah. I, I was <laughs> we just grew up regular kids. I wasn't I wasn't in a bootleg house trying to get my uncle Cecil to fuck. So <laughs> I was just worried about teenage mutant ninja turtles. <laughs> <laughs> you had the easy life. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank God for that shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I gotta say thank you to Oklahoma City and um where did I just come from? Kansas City? Oh, Oklahoma City and Kansas City. Y'all showed the fuck out. It was so much fun. So I just want to make sure I say thank them in the middle of the episode because you guys fucking rock. And I, I truly appreciate y'all. Can't wait to come back. I saw so many crack babies in the group. That yeah, we I saw a lot of pictures. Oh, did you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Them shoes you had on. Where the hell you get them shoes from? What's wrong with them? Nothing wrong with them. I ain't never seen no... I, they look like boots, gator shoes, and then the company. I, I've never seen nothing like that before. Where the fuck you get them shoes from? <laughs> I did you see them about, shoes, Chris? No, I'm, I'm looking for them right now. Just I like asked about out. those shoes all fucking weekend. What are those? And where you get those from? And and you know, I'm the type of person a lot of celebrities or people might not even, you know, say what they get, but you can really just take a picture of something and Google will tell you. It's a designer out of Canada named Jennifer Lee. And she makes these fire ass shoes. Are they it, boots? They're boots. Nigga, they all type of shoes. <laughs> all, I, all I can see is the top here. Let me show you. <laughs> Got here. These right here. Yeah. I, there should be a picture on her Instagram with the on boots, her, aren't her, there? Yeah, okay. it's on my Instagram. Okay. No, everybody asked me about those boots, but they're Jen. I am Jennifer Lee, L E L E, on Instagram. That's why I got those. She she sells some sexy ass shoes. So the green part is that leather or it's what is that? Oscar Dick. <laughs> Oscar Dick. He got grouch dick shoes. <laughs> <laughs> What they 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 you got look, Sesame Street stiletto. <laughs> it looks like you took uh, oh, you bet, I, I guess the best way to describe them is like you took a character, uh, an enemy from a character in a 90s TV show, and <laughs> that was a Muppet, and turned them into shoes. <laughs> it's like green scaly on the outside and white yeah. stuffing on the yeah. inside. I think the Oscar scale, how you pronounce it? Ostrich, ostrich, yeah. They're like that, and um, they're leather. And yeah. these are great pictures of you, by the way. You look cute. Yeah, it's a good outfit. Thank you. I'm 52. You look great. Thank you. Well, yeah, everybody asks me about them. They're very comfortable too, but I buy her shoes all the time. Nice. I like her. I, I like supporting small businesses. That's what I like to do. 
did she design any for you or were you just picking ones that she had? I'll just pick ones that she had. A lot of celebrities were out. What did y'all think about Cat William running at 4.9? <laughs> what? Cat Williams ran the 40 yard dash and they had a bunch of people out there <laughs> blocking them. That's a good time, isn't it? For somebody his age, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, did you see that uh Shannon Sharp, while I'm looking looking for it, Shannon Sharp said he made in that one interview off of YouTube revenue as much as any peak year in his NFL career. Hey. That's, Three times that is what he said. Oh, yeah. The most he made in one year was five million. So That's he probably he, he probably made somewhere close to eighteen twenty. Here is the uh, <laughs> the video. Why the hell this man do this? I mean, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck we got Cat Williams running the 40. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh, he, what? He, didn't he say he could run it at 0.2 seconds? That's pretty Something good. like that. That's, I mean, that's the speed that Nikea thinks he could run it in. What does he have to prove? Nothing. He's continuing to kill these motherfuckers out here. Go, he's, Cat, go. He's hot right now. Huh? He's hot right now. Get it while you can. I think people. I think people will always love Cat because you know he did some of the funniest shit. He's original. He don't bow down to the industry, and I think that's what people love about it. Yeah, I think he's brilliant. He just he's on a different thought level. You know, he's been one of my favorites. Pim Chronicles, but that uh, what's the one? that he just just did did you see it I can't, I can't remember the name of it i had to go look anyway but he's he's, he's he's i mean he's he's a master of this comedy shit and you know i don't give a fuck how much he call people out you see that i ended up on neighborhood talk this week uh -uh. for what so what's went, neighborhood talk it's like the shade room. So okay. I went to um I went to um where did I go? Oh, I went to the uh black women in Hollywood event, right? And so neighborhood talk asked me, they say, Well, what do you think about Monique? If you go to can you know how to get the neighborhood talk on Instagram? <laughs> the NAACP blocked it for my uh browser yeah right what <laughs> not joking <laughs> <laughs> oh they have 1.8 million followers uh, they, they, they did post a lot and yeah. i don't understand any of it <laughs> did they tag you in it pat oh here we go miss pat with two t's a lot of comedians love to make jokes about their personal lives, and sometimes that's what makes them so, you know, relatable to their fans. Recently, Monique made headlines because, you know, she made a joke about her issues with her son, and she received a lot of backlash from that. Being as though that you're in that world, what are your thoughts on that? Well, my thoughts is I mind my own business, and people talk about their kids the way they want to talk about their kids, and she talked about her son because I talk about my kids, too. I just don't talk about my kids like that. So I'm going to mind my business on that one, okay? I literally heard this woman have an argument with her son before, and she told him to shut up because he had a push pop dick. Oh. <laughs> you went down there and did that. <laughs> you know it's gonna be in the I was, and we were dying laughing because you, at that point, was so good about Miss Bat is that like she might cuss you out for film, but you can't help but laugh because it's so funny and so ridiculous. Now, being as though you are a comedian. That's funny, push pop dick. I'm guessing you were talking about Nikea. Uh, yeah. But I was like, look, yeah, I ain't trying to start no shit with nobody. Why do they always ask you about Monique? I swear, this has happened before, hasn't it? Yes. Because we're two fat people, two big black women, I guess. I don't fucking know. You know, <laughs> you just, I you just get asked about the same <laughs> Niecy Nash and.
Yeah, was I'm that like, lady who had a game show? <laughs> I don't get. I don't get into that. I don't, I'm not going to argue with anybody online. That's what I'm not going to do. Because I would give you my phone number and we would have a fucking conversation. She has way too many people to argue with in her real life. People, she does not have time for your online arguments. I don't. And I was like, you know, I, I was like, I don't know why they put that out like that. But uh, I'm ready for the backlash, but I haven't gotten any. Thank God. No, you didn't say anything. I, about that I was going to say, I don't think you said anything controversial. It's none of your business. And everybody in the comments was backing you up. Yeah. Cause I'm not arguing with no motherfucking body. No, I don't. I, comedian. I don't have time for it. And I was like, "What the fuck am I doing on a neighborhood talk?" <laughs> I try to stay the fuck away from them gossip, them gossip thing. I know people who work their asses off just to make it on that thing at least once a week. Y'all don't have to post Miss Pat, baby. I mean, Pat over here doing some DIY shit, doing her own <laughs> shit. Silky, Silky Sheik says, "Now leave Miss Pat out of this." Why? <laughs> Everybody's like, "Leave her alone." Leave me. I ain't. I ain't. I don't want to hear that bullshit. Do you know what Jumbo came and asked me today? He <laughs> said, "He said, Mama, hey, do y'all know what liver cheese is?" No. Mm. Look in my refrigerator and get that liver cheese. Uh. Portia. It, it sounds terrible. He was like, what the hell is this? He brought it to me. He had never seen it. Uh, liver yeah. fat? Looks like, are you pork fat? It's not cheese, Dion. If I'm Googling it correctly. That's it. First of all, King Cotton. I'm not buying anything from King Cotton. That's some kind of got with that Oscar Mayer, the liver cheese. If you canceled Aunt Jemima. Oh, that weak ass, fake ass lunch meat. Yeah. Pork Ugh. livers, pork fat, water salt, reconstituted onions, lactate, dextrose, and a bunch of other seed extracts, celery. So my husband eats this shit. He loves it. Ugh. It's like hot dog without being cooked. It's disgusting. Here you go. I get liver loaf like olive oaf for the old fashioned loaf, but like, why they call it liver cheese? It's not cheese. Because it's sliced like cheese. And, and Jumba was just blown away. He didn't know what he was like. What is this? <laughs> Does it smell horrible? No, it tastes good. Oh, I don't eat it. But my husband don't get. My husband he, he stay in that slave mentality. <laughs> is that slave food is it? <laughs> To me, it is. <laughs> <laughs> said, we ain't this poor. Why we eating this? <laughs> we ain't gotta be poor to eat this. The fuck are you talking about? Yes, you do. <laughs> That's poverty packaging. <laughs> yeah, I love old fashioned loaf, and you could look at old fashioned loaf and be like, that is disgusting, poor people food. But they're, you know. <laughs> not, not, not that poor people food. Uh, yeah, all all oh thinking about it just <laughs> makes well, me feel like a roach is crawling on my back. I'm about ooh, it's time for me to start my I'm oh well how, how much time we did? We're good. Yeah, we can wrap oh, up. I'm going tomorrow for my colonoscopy. Y'all please pray that my asshole and heart and everything be okay. So I have to take <laughs> Well, they're doing a scope in the heart while they're up there. Yeah, I was gonna yeah, say, <laughs> how low is don't your let heart? that man touch your heart if you play it in your way. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to <laughs> hair care and tire center? <laughs> Cardiovascular and colonoscopy all in one. <laughs> so while I'm open, what are you doing? You look like charger. <laughs> so you got to have a bunch of diarrhea tonight. Oh my God. And then they give me these pills and they don't do the liquid anymore. So they give you all of these pills. Wash your hand, baby. Just bring it to me. I make it. And um, I'm like, I don't want to do this. But I yeah. Do. You have to. John Andretti, he had, he missed one year and he ended up dying of colon cancer because he, he didn't, he skipped one year and they missed it. It was too late. My mom just got a mammogram. Um, She's, uh, just had breast cancer surgery and they caught it really early. Her prognosis is really good. But her friend said, you've got to go get a mammogram. It's been a long time. She's like, I don't want to. And then went and did it and 
fortunately they caught it and she's going to be fine. Thank goodness. Yeah. So you got to night of a thousand waterfalls as Bob and Tom says, you got to do it. Yeah. I don't know what that means, but okay. Okay. You know uh, it means you shit a lot. They make you take something and then you just say you poop your brains out. I'm about to oh, go. that's what you meant by waterfalls. I yeah. Thought you, thought you were making like. You, you used to have to drink this like. Thought. No, you used to have like a gallon of something that you had to drink, some barium juice or something. And then. You don't do that anymore. Yeah, now it's pills. So now I'm going to here in 10 minutes and I got to take like 12 pills at four o'clock. And I take another 12 at eight. So I'll probably be up all night. With Vaseline around the crack of my ass. Mm, I do not envy you. <laughs> you don't want your booty I, hole I feel, to get ashy. I, I feel bad for you. I, I do. <laughs> I feel bad, but uh, Vaseline. <laughs> like I had diarrhea a couple days ago. I could, you got to force that shit on yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I'm getting ready for, my colonoscopy. So got to get the asshole check and make sure ain't no little mushroom growing inside my booty hole. <laughs> You need to do the same, guys. Go get your booty holes checked because it's very, very important. It's you're not gay when a when a when a, when a camera go up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's put it some d- conditions on it. Okay? Thanks, Patricia Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. With that said, I gotta go get ready for my colonoscopy, and I would. The next podcast, I will tell y'all how wet it was. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure y'all uh, get your tickets. Memphis and North Carolina, I'm on my way. Naples, Florida, I'm on my way April the 6th and 7th. We changed the date because I have to go to New York for one day. So April 6th and 7th at Off the Hook Comedy Club. LA, I'm coming May the 3rd. Make sure you get your tickets. I will be a part of that Netflix is a jokes uh whole festival. I'll be there a whole week doing something somewhere, somehow. So make sure y'all get your tickets, okay? Go to misspackcomedy.com. But Memphis and North Carolina, we almost sold out. Get the last few tickets so we can fucking party. With that said, thank y'all for joining us on another episode of The Pat Down.